Hello, and thank you for being with me today. My name is Thomas Olson. I am an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Preventive Cardiology in the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine. I'm going to be talking about weight loss apps and their benefits. Before I get into the specifics of the apps, I'd like to talk for a moment about the overall mobile app ecosystem with particular emphasis on healthcare. In the healthcare setting, we can look at uh, smartphone apps in two big broad categories, those that focus on prevention and those that focus on management of illness. Within these broad categories, we can often break these down into smaller, more manageable categories, such as smartphone apps that an individual uses by themselves to provide self-care, apps that are associated with our healthcare institution or medical records, apps that provide professional or supportive care, and those apps that provide some form of social network uh, along with the app. Again, for today's talk, I'm gonna be focusing on smartphone apps that uh, look at or help individuals with diet and uh, caloric intake. So really, the big question that we're trying to answer is, what's the benefit of a weight loss app? Well, to answer that question, we really have to uh, focus on the evidence around the individual apps and whether or not the scientific literature supports the use of a smartphone app for um, that particular behavior change. So in thinking about weight loss, uh, there was a recent systematic review and meta-analysis conducted by Song He and colleagues published in the journal Health Information Research in 2019. These authors took a look at 20 individual randomized controlled trials that used some form of a smartphone or mobile app to provide an intervention to improve body weight and or improve body mass index. The, these individual research studies focused on obese, overweight and obese individuals and included 2,318 participants. The individual interventions ranged from three to four months to greater than 12 months in duration. What these authors found in their meta-analysis uh, was that when looking at the outcomes at the first time point, or the three to four month time window, it appeared that interventions provided through a mobile health or smartphone app were very effective at reducing uh, body weight or improving body mass index. As we moved out to the next time point of six months, these authors found very similar results where smartphone apps used in these interventions were um, highly effective at improving body mass or body mass index. As we move out a little bit further to the nine month time period, while still very effective, uh, these interventions using smartphone apps reduced body weight and body mass index. However, when we get out to the 12 month or greater than 12 month time period, we see that the smartphone apps were slightly less effective at um, improving uh, body mass and body mass index, albeit still significantly effective. Now, all of these studies were in overweight or obese um, to class two obesity individuals. But what about patients with known cardiovascular disease? Well, this is a very recent trial that was published just a couple months ago in 2021, which was a very similar systematic review and meta-analysis, including 25 individual randomized control trials in patients with known cardiovascular disease. Each of the individual randomized controlled trials lasted for a minimum of four weeks uh, and included at least 30 participants per study. 
Each of these randomized control trials had multiple outcome measures, which, of which included body mass index, food intake, healthy dietary choices, as well as unhealthy dietary choices. Looking at the results of the meta-analysis, unfortunately it seemed that smartphone apps did not have a significant impact on reducing body mass index. However, when looking at the uh, healthy food choices that individuals made during the intervention, there was a significant um, improvement. Similarly, when looking at healthy versus unhealthy dietary choices overall, there was a significant improvement in the healthy choices that the individuals made during the intervention. But using the smartphone app did not seem to have an impact on reducing the health, unhealthy dietary choices individuals were making. So overall, if we were to ask the question, do smartphone apps work to improve or help us with our weight loss? It does seem that mobile apps appear to have a significant positive impact when trying to improve healthy behaviors such as weight loss or improving our body mass index. Uh, mobile apps uh, appear effective, particularly when aimed at multiple behavioral outcomes. But unlike improving healthy behaviors, smartphone apps appear to be equally effective when compared to the usual care at changing unhealthy behaviors. So what are some of the things that impact the effectiveness of a weight loss app? And this really comes down to how we view behavior change. Part of this will depend on the ability of the smartphone app to stimulate motivation, particularly intrinsic motivation or our ability to uh, uh, regulate ourselves towards making a positive change. The ease of use of the app is particularly important for individuals trying to create a positive behavior change. Engagement of, social, uh, of a social network uh, also appears to play a role in positive behavior change when using uh, mobile apps or smartphone apps. Having good feedback from the app on good behaviors uh, will be helpful. And then how frequently an individual uses the app also impacts the effectiveness of that app. And then what type of information and how much information um, the app provides around that given behavior change will also impact our ability to change that behavior. So again, when looking at the role of behavior change in the effectiveness of weight loss apps, it's important to have a good foundation of uh, goals uh, for uh, the overall outcome or desired outcome that you're looking to accomplish. And then once your goals have been set, track your progress towards those goals, whether that be through calorie counting or measuring your body weight along your pathway. And then on that pathway, reward yourself uh, periodically for the accomplishments that you've made and provide yourself some positive feedback. It's okay to get advice and seek out additional education outside of what's provided in the app. As I mentioned on the pr prior slide, while it's important to have good informational content within the app, it's okay as an individual to seek out additional education or weight loss tips on your weight loss journey. And continue to seek that new information throughout your journey. Look for new cooking recipes or other ways to continue stimulating uh, positive behavior change. Talk to health coaches, dietitians, nutritionists, and look for that active engagement. And then as I mentioned previously, assess progression towards your goals and provide positive reinforcement to yourself. So overall, the take home message here is there are a lot of apps available, a lot of options, and there really isn't one size fits all. So find an overall strategy that works for you and be consistent with that strategy. However, don't be afraid of change. The app, device, gadget market is constantly evolving. 
And so although you may find something that works for you now, new apps, new devices, and new gadgets may be coming on the market in the future that may also work or even work better. Apps can provide immediate feedback, which is great, and we look for apps that do provide feedback. However, it is important to keep your focus on the long-term goal. For many of us who are trying to lose weight, it has taken a long time to get to the position that we're in. So we can't expect a quick fix to that. It may take a long time to reach our weight loss goals, and that's okay. So keeping a focus on the longer term goal is important. And then continue to educate yourself on ways to achieve those goals. Learn more about your current habits and build awareness of and around those habits. And again, talk to health coaches, talk to dietitians, and read artic articles, albeit from reputable sources, to continue to educate yourself and find ways to uh, improve your overall behavior and weight loss. So I'd like to take this minute to thank you for your t spending some time with me today. It's been a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak with you. Thank you.